Well, good morning, everyone. It is an honor and a privilege to gather with you all this morning. Can we get an amen for how wonderful God is in our lives this morning? Amen. 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 All righty. So as you guys are coming in, uh, we hope that you guys got, uh, grabbed one of the worship folders as you came in. Uh, please read through that. It has so much wonderful information. Um, it'll tell you so many things about what's happening around here, how you can serve and be part of the hands and feet of Jesus in our community and forward. Um, it also gives you information about several other things and people that you can pray for. And it's, especially if you're newer with us, it's a great resource for getting acclimated with what's going on around here. And if you are new with us or you uh, haven't been here very long, um, in front of you in your pews, there'll be a little pocket with a welcome card. Please fill that out. It shows, it gives us ways that we can pray for you, know where you're at in your journey, how we can meet you like where you are at. And there's also a place online. If you're with us online this morning or you're with us um, watching, you know, several weeks from now from the recording, um, we also know that uh, many of you have brought your tithes and offerings. Uh, those will be um, collected with the plates that are at the back at the end of service. And we're so thankful that um, for those of you who have brought that, that you are giving to the Lord. You are giving that back to him so that they can be used to continue to serve and reach more and more people. So this morning, as we begin our time in worship together, we pray that we would be centered on Christ. We would be centered on his word his message, his power, and his light. So will you please bow your heads and pray with me. Dear Lord, we are so thankful to be gathered in your name this morning. We are so excited for the opportunity to worship you, to be here in one place, to worship not just as a building, as one church, but as the church. Lord, we know that if, any, if two or more are gathered in your name, that you are there, and Lord, we are so excited that we get to all gather all for the same purpose of glorifying and worshiping you. In this season of Thanksgiving, we pray that we would be mindful and continue to be thankful for how you are moving in our lives. Lord, if there's anyone this morning that doesn't know you or is in a place where they are afraid to know you or afraid to open up in that way, we pray that your spirit's presence would be felt today and that they would know you more. Lord, we are so excited to be here this morning to worship, to lift our praises to you. And we are so excited that not only do we get to do that today, but each and every day. So it's in your great and powerful name that we pray. Amen. Will you please stand as we begin our time in singing today? i 
John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Let's find our identity in Christ, the one who created us and saved us and calls us his own. Continue singing together about how God is so, so wonderful.
Will you please bow your heads and pray with me? Dear Lord, we're so thankful that we get to be here today. Lord, we are so thankful that you have created water, earth, and sky. The heavens truly are your tabernacle, and we give you all the glory. Lord, as we continue into this time, we pray that we would continue to seek your presence, to seek your heart, to seek hearing you and seeing you and feeling your presence in this place. Lord, we're going to sing, we know we're going to sing a song about thanking you for the blood. Lord, we know that you sent your son to walk among us, to set the example of what it means to live a life focused on you. And then in the end, you sacrificed yourself on the cross. You defeated death, and on the third day, you rose again. For 40 days, you walked among us. You showed yourself, you showed the nails, the wounds that you had for being hung there for hours upon hours. And Lord, we know that when you reascended into the heaven to be at the right hand of the Father, we know that then you sent your Holy Spirit to walk among, to live among us, to be among us, to be in our hearts. So Lord, we pray that this morning we'd be thankful for that. We'd be thankful and mindful of how powerful and how so extreme and radical that really is. Lord, if there's anyone that doesn't know that good news or doesn't understand it or doesn't know how impactful that can be on their lives, we pray that they would know that this morning. So Lord, we do thank you for the blood applied. We thank you that it has washed us white and that you have saved us and that from that dark place you pulled us out into your glorious light. It is in your great name we pray. Amen. Let's continue singing together this morning as we sing, Thank you, Jesus, for the blood. From the far side of the chasm, you had me in your sight. So you made a way across the great divide, left behind heaven's throne to build it here inside. And there at the cross, you paid the debt I owed, broke my chains, freed my soul, for the first time I had hope. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied. Thank you, Jesus, it has won. took my place you took my place laid inside my tomb of sin and you were buried for three days but then you walked right out again and now death has no sin and life has no end for I have been transformed
stronger. There is nothing stronger. Worship folder. There's some uh, other names uh, that I'd like to add. One uh, name, uh, just uh, Becky Du Bois. Uh, she's not feeling well today, uh, as well as Lola Conway. If you want to pencil those in and pray for them, again, that's uh, Becky Du Bois and Lola Conway. As we come to prayer, uh, this is one of the things that we do um, as a community to lift up a name that we're all uh, gathered together to lift up on behalf of that person for healing, uh, for uh, reconciliation of relationships, for uh, perhaps uh, maybe that finances would somehow fit where they don't seem how they can. Uh, whatever that reason is, uh, though we, you may not know, I may not know uh, the details of these prayer requests, we know who does. And uh, he knows every detail and what needs to be done about that, okay? So let's bow our heads, and we're going to pray. And as we pray, just with your heads bowed, uh, just think of someone that, not yourself, but someone that you want to pray for. Just pray for that person right now in your, in your chair. spend just a few moments thanking God for that person. Father in heaven, as we consider your word, we, we remember with John that this is the testimony that you gave us eternal life, and this life is in your Son. We have Whoever has your Son, the Son of God, has eternal life. Whoever does not have the Son does not have life. How simple that is. We thank you for the generosity poured out in that statement right there. Thank you, Father, for who you are. All-powerful, all-knowing, all-caring, all-loving, the psalmist says, I lift up my eyes to the hills from where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Our help comes from you 
who made heaven and earth. Forgive us our sins. Forgive us for looking aside and forgetting, looking away from the reality of who you are. Thank you for loving us still. Thank you for your, your power and your might in our lives. Lord, we lift up to you these names. You know exactly what's going on in their lives, so we pray for Emily Cherry, Kim Swanger, Heather Jones, Bev White, Becky Du Bois, Lola Conway, Jim Kyle, Adriana Stewart, Constance Sakotas, and Noah Baker. Lord, we thank you for the privilege you give us to serve. Serve right here in this community. The blessings exchange. Thank you for the leaders. Thank you for those who contribute and those who receive. We thank you for Hannah's house and all the girls that they serve. For every girl, I pray that they would be rescued out of the cycle of poverty, abuse, and neglect. We thank you for the privilege of having far-flung missions like the one we have to Uganda. We pray for our missionaries, Tim and Colleen Stevenson and their family, for Caitlin Smith, her ministry too. We pray also for Dave and Barbara Miller and Dan and Christy Kim in Bolivia and Hungary, respectively. Bless them wherever they're at, that they would sense your presence. We think of also of, of um, Adrian, my brother in Christ, Adrian and Annie, in, in Uganda. Bless them as they minister today. Lord, we thank you for the country in which we live, wherever that may be, whether it's here in the United States or in Europe or in Africa or whoever's listening online or present in this room. Bless those leaders. May, help them to be wise beyond their years, to make decisions by and in faith to your glory. We thank you for your word. We ask, Lord, as we open up today your word and we look at these friends of Paul, that we would rem be reminded of our own friends and how we can approach them. We thank you for not only your word, but we thank you for your church. We thank you for your son. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you for the blessing you pour upon us every day. For those here present or those who are online, in every need that we have, May you meet every one of those needs by the riches of the glory who is Christ Jesus. And it's in his name that we can ever pray such things. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. So in your, in your worship folder, not only do we have uh, these, these prayer requests, uh, but we also have a few announcements that I just want to point out to you. Um, our, our team today from the May team of you, the Uganda trip that went in May are now at um, Amsterdam Church of God presenting to them. So that's, uh, we, we think of them, we miss them while they're, they're away from us. That's Pastor Jenny and, and Mike Conway, the, the leaders of that, that particular group and their team. Um, we also are thankful for the Christmas decorations. Isn't this great? Oh, you can do better than that. That's great. Uh, uh, so we have a dynamic duo over here. Uh, so uh, Karen Maxwell and Christine Miller, uh, they are of the Oberly clan. If you don't know who they are, this church building <clears throat> has a lot to do with their, their clan and other fa founding families. And so Karen has, has led this effort uh, for a long time, okay? E she says eons. Not that it's hard, okay? But she told me yesterday, <clears throat> yesterday that she's, she's officially pass the baton to another overly, Christine Miller. Would you give God praise for what they're doing there? And they'll be the first to tell you that they're not the only ones who did this. this is, I came in here and the team was at it. Uh, look at that tree. Isn't that beautiful? Um, and in fact, it's, it's a little early this year, which I don't mind. Uh, we, we talked about it. We'll call it Thanksmas uh, today. <laughs> We're just glad that, uh, thankful that uh, the team got together and made this happen. Uh, so uh, we have the Christmas card post office uh, happening. Again, that's a way for you to connect with others in the church community in a way that uh, allows them to get their letter here and anything you want to donate toward that effort is going to go to missions. Uh, you can see the instructions there. Uh, poinsettia orders are, are also uh, available uh, as of uh, um, 
last week, and it continues to next week. You see our benevolence team uh, has some needs. We're uh, preparing our Christmas baskets, and you can see what, what, what's required there. And then we have our annual business meeting, which will be December the 4th, two weeks, two short weeks from today. Uh, and we should have, is that right? Yes, two weeks. Uh, from today, we'll have uh, our, our business meeting, but we have Q&A sessions before that. Right after the service next week in room 202, uh, right back behind uh, the, the elevator there, uh, we'll have our Q&A session directly after the service on Sunday. And then at 6 p.m., same room on Wednesday evening, we'll have our Q&A session to prepare you for any uh, questions that you have uh, before our, our business meeting on the 4th. And that's what's happening right here at East Canton Church of God. I hope you will take this and read this uh, sometime this week. Uh, please get your Bibles and go to uh, Colossians chapter 4. As you open up your Bibles, I am especially glad uh, today uh, to have my, our daughter, Katharina, and her husband, Alex, with us. And, of course, they brought on a special guest with us. Our grandchild, Emil, is here. So, welcome. We're so glad you're here, aren't we? Yes, thank you. All the way from Germany, and they're uh, here with us, and we're so glad. Uh, it's so great to have... Uh, have them with us. Uh, so um, Sherry and I, when we were, uh, after we were married and we were getting to know each other, we, we made friends pretty, pretty easily, and we still do. Um, but there was uh, one time we, we met this couple, and this couple was a little ahead of us in terms of years. They had uh, three or four, I think they had four children, and uh, all just a little older than our kids. And uh, so they were a little farther down the road, the parenting road, and they also were a little uh, more spiritually experienced, had been uh, followers uh, quite a bit longer than we had, and we had a lot to learn from them. And we connected, connected really well with them. And then, uh, in fact, uh, not because we lived in the neighborhood, but they were looking for a larger house. A larger house opened up in our neighborhood, and they even, they even uh, moved in. It was, it was a really, really nice moment. But then something happened. Uh, it was just, it was, the, the relationship changed. And to this day, I can't tell you why, uh, the relationship changed. We were friendly and all that stuff, but it just wasn't as close. We could never figure out why. Even when we asked, it just it didn't, didn't make sense. Have you ever had one of those relationships? Where, where you, it, it, it caused me, I can tell you, it caused me to not want to try anymore because I didn't want to be hurt. Anyone else? Yeah? And so I, friendships can be complicated. Friendships can take a lot of work. Do you think it's worth it sometimes? You think it's worth it? To, you know, it's easy for us to, to kind of hold back. And, 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 and I uh, have learned in this pandemic, and I mentioned to you before, there's two big lessons. One is we need God. Two, we need each other, right? But it's still difficult. It's still hard. There's this song uh, the Beatles sang, uh, it, and it always struck me because it was sung by the drummer, Ringo Starr, and it was, uh, I get by with a little help from my, oh, you've, you've heard that song, right? I could try with a little help from my friends. I thought those phrases were interesting because, you know, no matter how you cut it, we do need each other, but are we really better together? Are we really better together or is it sometimes just want to kind of close the doors and kind of hide in our little homes? Anyone? See, Right now, we even have people in our, in our world who's, who's, who wants to isolate, who wants to pull away. So the question I have today before we read our text is this. Are we really better together? Are we really better together? But we say it, but how really true is it? So, so let's look at Colossians 4. We've been, we went through the whole letter. This will be our last sermon on that, the whole letter of Colossians studied it through. And so please stand as we read these final verses. I'm reading uh, beginning in seven. It'll be on the screen there uh, till, till verse 18. Tychicus will tell you all about my activities. He is a beloved brother and faithful minister and fellow servant in the Lord. I have sent him to you for this very purpose, that you may know how we are and that we 
may in, and that he may encourage your hearts. And with him, Onesimus, our faithful and beloved brother, who is one of you, they will tell you of everything that has taken place here. Aristarchus, my fellow prisoner, greets you. And Mark, the cousin of Barnabas, concerning whom you have received instructions, if he comes to you, welcome him. And Jesus, who is called Justice. These are the only men of the circumcision among my fellow workers of the, of the kingdom of God, and they have been a comfort to me. Epaphras, who is one of you, a servant of Christ Jesus, greets you, always struggling in, on be, your behalf in his prayers, that you may stand mature and fully assured in all the will of God. For I bear him witness that he has worked hard for you and for those in Laodicea and in Heropolis. Luke, the beloved physician, greets you, as does Demas. Give my greetings to the brothers at Laodicea and to Nympha and the church in her house. And when this letter has been read among you, have it also read in the church of the Laodiceans. And see that you also read the letter from Laodicea. And say to Archippus, see that you fulfill the ministry that you've received in the Lord. I, Paul, write this greeting with my own hand. Remember my chains. Grace be with you. May God bless us. You may be seated. Thanks for standing for God's word. So here we see uh, that Paul gets by with a little help from his friends. Let's, inter let's, let's be introduced to them. Let me introduce to you a guy named Tychicus. His word, his, his, his name means fortuitous or fortunate. Uh, he was a constant, consistent, and reliable manager. I mean, not only was he a, 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 to, to send the message, take the letter to the church in Colossa, he also did the same thing with the letter to Ephesus. And when he was there, he was to do the same thing. He was to encourage their hearts. He sent, Paul did also sent Tychicus to Ephesus more than once. He also sent Tychicus to Titus as we read the rest of the, of the New Testament. Here's some, some verses you, if you want to take your notes so you can write that down and, and look it up later. But here's what we know about Paul and, and Tychicus. Paul trusted Tychicus to send a message and encourage others. This friend was important to Paul. Do you have a friend like that? Do you have a friend like that who you can rely upon like Paul did? Let me introduce you to a guy named Onesimus. All these words are not in any baby books. Don't know why. Onesimus was one of the people of Colossae. It made tremendous sense. You know, if, if uh, I have someone that, uh, that I don't know that comes to me and introduces himself, that's different than if, if that person is introduced by someone who, who I know. Right? The level of trust increases dramatically. It was very wise by Paul to do this. Not only did he send Tychicus, who they didn't know, it seems, but also they sent Onesimus, like, a, like a, um, a companion that you could trust. Onesimus, we learn from the rest of the New Testament, in particular the letter to Philemon, is that Onesimus was a slave of, of Philemon. But more than that, Paul calls him a co his co-slave that Paul and he were slaves together, slaves to Christ. He was a brother. In fact, this is what he described, how he described uh, Onesimus. He says, look, I appeal to you. He's, he's writing to Philemon. I appeal to you for my child Onesimus, whose father I became in my imprisonment. Formerly, he was useless to you in the sense that he had left Philemon, but now he was being sent back Onesimus was by Paul. Formerly he was useless to you, but now he's indeed useful to you and to me. I'm sending him back to you, sending my very heart. That's a, isn't that a strong statement? I mean, that, that describes how Onesimus and, and Paul were, were connected. Paul had deep affection for Onesimus. Do you have a friend that's so close to you that sending him or her is like sending yourself? because you know each other so well, because you guys are so connected. This was Onesimus. Let me introduce you to a guy named Mark. Actually, you know Mark. Mark and Justice is described here. Mark is the writer of the, third, or the second account of the gospel. You heard of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. This is the same guy. He was a cousin of one of other Paul's uh, companions named Barnabas. 
Now, uh, the, the history of the friendship between Paul and Mark, also called John, is a little complicated. So here, let me tell you the story. Here's what happened. On, on Paul and Barnabas' first missionary journey, they take John Mark along with them. But unfortunately, some very early into the trip, um, they learned that uh, John left them and returned to Jerusalem. We don't know why, why he did that, but we do know that Paul remembered. So then the second missionary journey, when they were ready to go, Paul and Barnabas, here's what happened. I'm reading from Acts 15, 37 to 40. Now Barnabas wanted to take with him John called Mark, but Paul thought best not to take with them one who had withdrawn from them in Pamphylia. Other translations say deserted them in Pamphylia and had not gone with them to the work. And so there arose a sharp disagreement so that they separated from each other. Barnabas took Mark with him and sailed away to Cyprus. But Paul chose Silas and departed, having been commended by the brothers to the grace of the Lord. So Paul and Mark had a kind of rough, rocky start. But that's not the end of the relationship at all. Here we see in, in 2 Timothy 4.11, this is what, how Paul describes Mark. Luke alone is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you. What does it say? Read that to me. For he is very useful to me for ministry. Something changed. Something changed from the time that, that John Mark had disappointed to the time that now he was fulfilling a ministry for Paul. You know, maybe you know this already, but sometimes friendships are complicated. Sometimes they don't go like you want them to, at least not at first. They, they're, they're not easy. Some of them take work. And this is the relationship that Paul and Mark had. Now, Mark wasn't alone. There was also a guy named Justice. Justice, like Mark, was Jewish. That's what he called, what's called of the circumcision. They were Jewish. And, they greet, and he greeted the church as well. He's not mentioned by the scriptures in any other way except here. But here's the significant thing. He was a comfort to Paul. He was a comfort. Now, when you think of comfort, what do you think of? Now, I, I have an example. Yesterday, Sherry made her famous ham and cheese sliders. Wow. Uh, I'm hungry right now thinking of it. And wait, it was one of those, you know, those cold days, you get hot sandwiches, and what goes good with a hot sandwich? You've been there. Soup, right? And so Alex made some uh, pumpkin soup. It was comfort food, right? That's not the comfort we're talking about. In this, wor in this word, comfort, it means to come alongside. When, when you're in the hospital and you don't know what to say, can I tell you, being quiet and being present is a great comfort is a great comfort and it's not only in the hospital but it's also in prison now in in paul's time in paul's time and actually in cultures today when someone goes to prison they don't get necessarily as one person told me today three hots at a cot okay they don't they don't get fed they they have to be fed by their friends and this is the way it was in paul's time so without his friends, he would not do well. But they came alongside and comforted him, maybe gave them ham and cheese sliders. We don't know. But they took care of Paul's needs. This is what a comfort is, loved ones. Comfort is presence. Comfort is presence. These friends were a comfort. Do you have friends like that? Do you have friends like that? Now, let me tell you about a guy named Aristarchus again, not in a baby book anywhere. He was a traveling companion of Paul, and he greeted them. This is what we know of Aristarchus. Aristarchus was shipwrecked with Paul in Acts 27. Shipwrecked. I mean, if you read the account in Acts 27, everyone should have died, but by God's grace and his mercies, they, they, they remained alive. And our Aristarchus was on that troubled ship. He was also caught in a riot in Ephesus in Acts 19. He eventually became, as we read, a fellow prisoner. He demonstrated, Aristarchus did, over the years that he could be relied upon as one who kept his eyes on the Lord and the strength that he offered. He showed his perseverance even to becoming uh, imprisoned. 
He was a friend, the Bible talks about, who sticks closer than a brother. We know that is also referring to Jesus, but someone who is Jesus to you, who you could rely upon over the years, that is like an Aristarchus. Do you have a friend like that? One who has proven himself or herself? Let me introduce you to another guy. His name is Epaphras. Epaphras we've met before in, in, our, in our study. He was, Epaphras was a disciple of Paul, trained to raise other disciples. He goes to a Colossa and raises up a church. This guy was known as one who struggles on their behalf in prayer. Struggles they, that they may stand mature and fully assured in all the will of God. This friend of Paul's struggled in prayer. Do you have a friend like that? One who would struggle in prayer for you? Luke is mentioned also, and, and Luke is also the, the author of the third account of the gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke. He's also the writer of the Acts of the Apostles. He was a loyal companion all through. He was also on that shipwreck so I, I described earlier. He's a loyal companion. Do you have a friend like that? Let me introduce you to a guy named Demas. Demas was present with Paul as he wrote this letter. But we've learned as we read on in the scriptures in 2 Timothy 4, verse 10, this is what it says. Demas, for Demas, in love with this present world, has done what? Has deserted me and gone to Thessalonica. This friend started well, but became or brought disappointment. Have you ever had a friend like that? Can I give you some hope? Look at Mark. Remember, Mark didn't start so well. But Paul, knowing that one day, if, if they're in Christ Jesus, they're going to spend eternity in heaven with one another, he spent the time to reconcile. So Demas always, I believe, had an open door to return to Paul. Do you have somebody that, that you want to be sure remembers you and that you can reconcile with? This might be like De uh, Demas. Let me give you one more. Archippus, another friend of Paul's, was a fellow soldier and member of Philemon's church. We could read that in, in the letter to Philemon. Something, we don't know what, was happening in Archippus's ministry so that Paul took time in his letter to write these words. Tell Archippus to continue in the ministry that you have received in the Lord. You know, Paul urged his friends to continue in that work. Do you have a friend like that? who will continue to encourage you to complete your work in the Lord, these are Paul's friends. Did they, did they really make life better for Paul, for themselves? What can we learn from them regarding how we work and how we live together? First thing is Paul's friends greeted one another, greeted one another. We see this in Paul's letters, not all of them, but many of them. In fact, the, in, your, in your notes, write Romans 16 and go to the first 16 verses, all kinds of people that Paul wanted to make sure that he remembered to greet. And loved ones, by and large, we, I believe, in our nation, in the United States, and I think maybe in, in many Western cultures, we've lost the art of greeting. It's turned into something, something quick. I mean, just today as I greet somebody, there's some people who just walk right by me. It's just the way, the way I think our culture is. Some people are uncomfortable to be greeted. But can I tell you that we desperately need to be greeted, and we need to greet others. This, this came uh, to me full, uh, full force a couple of trips into my time in Uganda. I, was, I may have told you this story before. I can't remember. I was, I was there. We, we had arrived, had a night's sleep. We were going to get ready for the day. We were organizing our bins so that we could take them and put them on the vans. And so I, I was one of the co-leaders. So I walked out. And I found one of, uh, of um, Tim and Colleen Stevenson's employees. His name was Moses Magula. And I, I went to Moses and I said, Moses, I, blah, blah, I start going to task mode. Is anyone else in task mode all the time? Okay, I was in task mode. And he listened to me. I said, yeah, we need to get these up here. And, to go. and, I started like, and, I, and he was just nodding, smiling because he smiles. And after I was done, he says, good morning, pastor. How is your sleep? How is your bride, Sherry, doing? How is Isaac doing? I'm like, oh, I just want to get the job done. <laughs> but he was right. 
What's more important than the task is our relationship. And he, he taught me to, to spend a little time, even if it's just a simple good morning, to get to know someone else or reacquaint myself from the previous day. Oftentimes, what will we say? How you doing? And what's our response? Fine. You know what it means, right? Freaked out, insecure, neurotic, and emotional. Yes, <laughs> many of you are very fine. We, we just say fine and we just move on, right? It's, or, or we'll say, yep, all good. Really? If someone asks them, how, ask you how you are, tell them. Then you know if they really wanted to know. We greet to learn about others because they're important enough for us to know. Greetings properly done are small little shots of encouragement. Greetings are the entry into bearing one another's burdens. And without greeting one another, we don't know, do we? I used to tell my kids, make sure you listen with your eyes. We hear the words, fine, but listen with our eyes. And we go, wait, no, not so fine, are you? Yeah, good morning. Good morning. You know something's up. Stop. Say, it doesn't sound like it's a good morning. Tell me about it. Greet one another. Paul's friends not only greeted one another, they encouraged one another. There is encouragement and then there's exhortation. Encourage is simply to, to infill someone with courage. Exhortation is to do it strongly, to maybe to move them in a different direction because you know that's the best for them. Let me give you an example. In Hebrews chapter 3, it says, but exhort one another every day as long as it's called today that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin, that none of you may be distracted away from the goal that God placed in front of you. In Hebrews 10, 24 and 25, this is probably familiar to many of you. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another. And all the more as you see what day? The day. The day. Okay, remember this. We talked about this last week. Every one of us is one day closer to seeing Jesus face to face. That's the day. And we want everyone to have a good day on that day. That's encouragement. Paul pointedly commands Archippus, though, see that you fulfill the ministry that you have received in the Lord. This is called exhortation. You can do this. Don't, don't look away. I can't tell you how many leaders, whether pastors or elders or lay leaders, I have talked with that have approached a ministry. It's gotten hard. It's becoming difficult. And they assume God's called me someplace else. Loved ones, don't be like John, John Mark, the one who deserted. Don't be like Demas, who gets distracted. Don't mess with God's call. Make sure you know God's call and stick with it. Stick with it. This, this loved ones, is a part of the relationship that could be difficult. Have you ever had someone in your life you know they're going the wrong direction, but you feel uncomfortable telling them? Anyone? Both of us? Yes? All right. It is an act of love to tell them. As long as you're motivated by love and you speak the truth in it, speak it. How will they receive it? I don't know. They may think you're meddling. Okay. But we need encouragement. Would you want to be encouraged if you're going the wrong direction? Yes? I would too. So why do we do this? Loved ones, encouragement is not only a command. We do so because we love. We do so because we want the best for someone else. Encouragement is, you can do this. Don't give up. Encouragement is, trust in the Lord. He's going to see you through it. Don't look away from him. Encouragement is this. Hey, Paul is, is in prison, but he's doing okay in the ministry. Keep praying for Paul. Encouragement is, I'm praying for you. Have you ever had someone say that to you? How's it feel? feels good. That's encouragement too. 
And as we encourage, we also do this thing that Epaphras was doing, and that is struggle in prayer. Now, what was he doing? Was he working out in prayer? Did he, was he praying with dumbbells, trying to get a workout? What, what does it mean to struggle in prayer? This is the struggle, loved ones. We struggle in uncertainty when we don't know how things are going to happen, right? When something's important, someone's ill, or the relationship's gone bad, or someone's traveling and they're, and they're going in places that are, that are concerning to you. And so you don't know. I remember Sherry just reminded me this, this week when, when Isaac went to Utah and it, it, he was going backpacking for a week, yeah, with, with uh, his cousins and uh, someone else. He had to drive a car to a, to a place where he picked up a boat and then he went for a week. And he, he is so funny. He texts Sherry, see you on the other side. <laughs> Sherry was struggling in prayer. You see what I mean? We don't know. And so we struggle in prayer. We keep lifting it up to the Lord. And he was struggling because there were problems in the church. We studied this several, several weeks ago. How he was, there were folks trying to take the church captive by philosophy and empty deceit. According to human tradition, he was struggling in prayer against that. He knew that there were self-appointed umpires and, and referees passing judgment on, on how, what they ate and what they drank and what festivals they, they participated in or not. He was struggling in prayer for them. He knew that there were influential people in the church trying to, to disqualify the saints. He was struggling in prayer. He didn't know how it would turn out. But he was struggling because he wanted the saints to stand mature and fully assured in the will of God. Struggling in prayer is what we do for each other as we bear each other's burdens. And as, as Galatians 6 says, and when we bear each other's burdens, we fulfill the law of Christ. We fulfill the law of Christ. Lastly, we seek and share God's grace. Why? Because God gives it. And so we're called to do the same. We see all these people named in the Bible as friends of Paul. What an honor. I mean, it's almost 2,000 years, and we're still talking about a guy named Tychicus or Aristarchus or Onesimus, all these guys, and Nympha, a gal. We're, we're, we're talking about people who received God's grace and was willing to share it with others. But here's the deal. We, we kind of elevate them, right? Because we don't know any better. But can I tell you, they're real people making real choices, facing real consequences, just like you, just like me. You know, I have to believe that some of them may have been difficult people. You ever have a friend who's difficult? They do something, it just drives you crazy. It's like figures out on a screen on a chalkboard, or maybe they have bad breath, right? They're just real people. And Paul looks aside the halitosis, and he just says, these are my friends. These are the ones I can count on. It reminds me that our friends need grace. I've talked about EGRs. Everyone has an EGR in their life, F extra grace required, right? Anyone? And those of us who raise our hand, we're EGRs too to somebody. We get underneath their skin. They go, here comes Greg. Oh, it's got to be nice. Because he just drives me nuts. Right? Because people, some people, you know, it's like oil and water. I don't know. It just happens. We need to receive God's grace and give God's grace. And I think this is why Paul, in most of his letters, if not all of them, says, Either grace to you or grace be with you. This grace is God's unmerited favor. And perhaps that saying is simply an ongoing recognition of our collective need for God's grace. Loved ones, we need his grace and we need each other. In your notes, saints are better together. Saints are better together. Saints are not meant to be alone. And, and those who are online, I encourage you to, to recognize this, to come and be in the gathering. Did you know church 
is, is a, it comes from the Greek word ecclesia, which means the gathering, the gathering of God's anointed ones, God's saints. He, we are meant to be together. We are meant to gather. And, and I'll take it one step further. Isolation leads to destruction. Isolation leads to spiritual destruction. And some of us, you know, we're married and we think, okay, we can have, have each other and that's good. But I think that's a, kind of a false security. We, we need not only each other, man and wife together, but we also need each other. And single folks, I'm not saying you should be married or necessarily or not. Doesn't, what I say is what the word says, that we need each other, everybody. Seclusion, loved ones, is different. Seclusion is we, we do what Jesus did. Remember, he pulled himself away from the crowd, and what did he do? He prayed. So what, we, what do we do in the morning? We get on our knees, we open our Bibles, we pray. And then we come and we gather in with others and we work with others and we live with others and we give grace to others. In Genesis 2.18, here's what it says. The Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. That's often reflected as couples should be together. But we also know from the rest of the scriptures that some people are called to be single, some people are called to be married. In this context, I think there's more fundamental principles that we need to, to hold on to, and that is we are not meant to be alone. We're not. There is an underlying truth here. Not only are we not meant to be alone, we are meant to be in community together. We are better together. Saints, look out for the benefit of other saints. And friends, are those that we bring into our inner circle that we, we trust the most, just like this list of, of Paul's friends, right? We bring them in and we trust them. And listen, we've talked about this before. Friends are those who want you to have a good day on that day. Friends are those who want the best for you in Jesus Christ. Saints, friends, look out for other saints. We recognize that God has called us to be in community with God and others. And so we greet one another. Now, some of us are easy. We, we're, we're good at greeting people. Other people aren't so. We're a little, a little more timid, a little more shy. We're not as outgoing. But I tell you what, those of you who fall in that camp, let me ask you a question. If your kids came in, would you greet them? If your parents came in, well, uh, maybe not. No, if your parents came in, you'd greet them, right? Yeah, grandparents, grandchildren, friends. If you can greet them, you can greet them anybody. You can greet anybody. And some of us say, well, I'm not in the mood. Seriously, you're going to go with that one? <laughs> Feelings fail us, loved ones. And can I tell you, I think this is a, a, a thing that we should need to remember. If we don't feel like greeting someone, we do it anyway. Because when we do, we feel better. I, I had a loved one that I grew up with. Uh, they would come home moody. Anyone lived with a moody person? Okay. And you just never know what you're going to get, right? And they come in a bad mood like, oh, I used to pray as a kid for company to come over because they would brighten up and the company would leave and they'd be in a good mood. Can I tell you that was a choice? We have a choice to make. Are we going to greet one another no matter how we feel? Don't let feelings rob you of the blessing. There it is again. Of a time of greeting. Listen to what Paul teaches us from Romans. He says, love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do, read this with me, to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, read it, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. I've read that, I've looked around, there's no exceptions, unless you don't feel like it. I haven't seen that. Have you? No. God has called us to be in community with one another. And sometimes we don't feel like it, and that's the best time to be in community with one another. We need each other. Unfortunately, in this culture, we're taught to look after number one. Are we not? Ourselves above others, when the scripture speaks a completely different message. As I have loved you, Jesus said, what does it say? So you must love one another. Greeting one another says, I notice you. 
Greeting one another says, you have value. Greeting one another says, we share something in common. You and I, we're made in the image of God. And as saints greet each other, we say, we're trying to live out this day recognizing that we cannot do this alone. Greeting does far more than you think it does. Greeting leads to encouragement and support. Who among you needs to be encouraged and supported? How will you know if you haven't greeted them? Who among you needs to be encouraged in the faith? How will you know unless you ask? Encouragement then leads to prayer. Who are you struggling for in prayer? Who have you asked to pray with you? And when will you be willing to trust others to struggle in prayer for you, for yourself? In your notes, saints are better together. Say that with me. Saints are better together. So if you were writing a letter today, who would you call out in greetings? Think about that. If you're writing a letter to, to this church, who would you call out to greet? Or maybe you're, you're writing to your, your high school class. Some of you, that's a long time ago. Some of you, not so. Maybe you're still in your high school class. Who would you greet? Think of someone, maybe the same people you're thinking of to greet, and, and text them. Think of someone you need to text simply with these words, I miss you, or I love you, or how are you doing? Think of someone you need to call, not to tell them what's happening with you, but discover how you can encourage them. Not bringing the subject back to yourself, but keeping it on them. Think of someone that you need to sit down with today and just listen. And just listen to them. Don't let those who love you go by you. Sorry, don't let those you love go by you today without greeting them, without listening to them, without encouraging them, without sharing in God's grace, and without a willingness to pray for them. Please bow your heads. Heavenly Father, I'm so grateful for friends. I'm grateful for the privilege you, have, you gave us to have relationship one to the other. We thank you for the, the privilege of having a relationship with you first and then with others. This recognition that one day as we enter into eternity, we can bring people with us as we encourage them, as we tell them about Jesus, as we encourage them to follow Jesus, as we encourage them to walk faithfully, just like Archippus, continue in the ministry that you have in the Lord. Thank you for that privilege. Lord, open up our minds today to those who need to be greeted, those who we need to reach out to and say, you know, how are you doing? And listen, and then pray. Give us the courage to get beyond our, our comfort zones our comfort levels, and reach into someone's life that may desperately need a hand up, desperately need a hug, just a a simple conversation. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would open up our minds to that possibility and may lives be changed by the result of your power in their lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So we're gonna uh, just sing briefly. Uh, if, If... If you want to come and spend a little time with the Lord, uh, we have these two altars here, one on my left, your right. Uh, If you want to just pray by yourself, come on up here and pray. One on my left, sorry, did I say that right? That's your right, my left, right? Okay, that one uh, over there, if you want to pray by yourself, do that. And then over here, if you want someone to pray with you, that's my right, your left, um, come up here, we'll pray with you, okay? Please stand and let's sing together. Let us sing, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Great is Thy Faithfulness, O God, my Father. 
sing that refrain one more time. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning new mercies I see. All I have needed As you leave this place, you have a special day coming up on, on Thursday. A special day in this country, anyway. It's called Thanksgiving. So as you approach Thanksgiving, spend time with the Lord and thanking him for all that he, he pours upon you. But more than that, find those people that you need to reach out to and tell them how much they mean to you and encourage someone in the Lord. Deal? God bless you. Go in his peace.